type of pest that can destroy your property. That's the topic for today's episode. And without further ado, let's dive in. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode at Nova Rice Invest. And for those who are tuning in for the first time, this is your channel for real estate education. So today we have a rather unusual topic um, because let's face it, nobody talks about pests openly, right? You normally will be thinking about, hey, when will be the next time that I will buy my next property? And not necessarily be thinking about, hey, when will be the next time that I will get my next pest infestation, right? But as uncomfortable as it might seem, this is one of those topics that we have to cover anyways. And that's why we decided to do that today so that you are informed and you know exactly what to do in the event that something like that happens to you or your property. And without further ado, let's go straight into the board. So like I said, we have five type of pests, right? Guess which one will be the first that we have on the list? Those are bees. Yes, you might be wondering, really bees? But they're so cute and they're helpful to the environment. They take pollen from one area to another and they help build the ecosystem and we have fresh air and all that stuff. They even make Disney movies out of them. Yes, they might be true. Bees are great, but when they are in their natural habitat, not when their habitat it's in your home. Why is that, you might wonder? Well, imagine you have a property and you have a tenant right there and there's a beehive in the backyard, right? And it's growing bigger, bigger, and bigger. And then your tenant's child just, you know, one day just bump into it. Maybe the parents didn't notice that it was there. And all of a sudden the kid is like, oh, you know what, this is fun. Let me just go ahead and poke it. And next thing you know, that child has been attacked by the beehive. <laughs> You definitely don't want that to happen to you, right? Just picture in your head how that might go and how that lawsuit could end up for you. The same thing goes for people who have Airbnbs. Imagine getting a bad review from one of your guests just because you didn't realize there was a beehive in your backyard. And believe it or not, the problem doesn't really end there. The problem is that bees, they love to be within communities. They love to be together. They love to build their hives together. And one way or the other, they always manage to come back. So for those who are willing or planning to venture it out of there with a special suit and with a broomstick and willing to be poking the beehive to disappearance, well, let me ask you to think about it twice because removing it might seem a little bit challenging, but it's not the difficult part of it. The difficult part is, like I said, if they manage to come back, because after you remove the beehive, you have to make sure that the area is properly treated so that way they don't pick up on any honey essence or anything or whatever is it that they left off and they could come back or maybe not necessarily that particular bee community, a new bee community come pop up in your house and say, hey, surprise, we are here to make your home our home. And you definitely don't want that to happen. So that was number one. Now, number two on the list will be Roaches. Ooh, disgusting. I'm sure roaches don't require any type of introduction. We all know that they carry diseases with them, that they can spread it all over, and it could also affect not only our physical health, but also our mental health. Now, you might be wondering, okay, but what does it have to do really with real estate? At the end of the day, if my tenant has roaches, that is their problem, not necessarily mine. Well, think about it twice. Imagine you have a multifamily property and all of a sudden one of your tenants, it's loaded with roaches. What do you think is going to happen? Roaches can travel in the tiniest space as possible. They could eventually get next door or next door, next door. And when you least suspect it, it's all over the building or all over the place. And for those who have single family homes, think about it twice because Remember, roaches usually like to travel at night. They like to procreate, they like to lay eggs and stuff like that. And next thing you know, they are all over the place. And if you, for whatever reason, encounter a roach in the middle of your kitchen in the middle of the day, you might be already too late because why? If they dare to come out in the middle of the day, chances are that when you open that kitchen cabinet, you're gonna have a ton of roaches popping out of your cabinet. <laughs> Ugh, that's definitely disgusting. And the problem doesn't end there. The infestation 
It's one component of the problem. Imagine people not wanting to renew your leases because, hey, you have a dirty place. People don't want to live there. Or worse, they can call sanitation, they can show up in your house or your property and find your for it. And next thing you know, they're going to be always constantly monitoring that you do, in fact, take care of the property as you should. And if you have an Airbnb, well, that's even worse. I don't think it needs any further explanation because all you need, it's a bad review in your profile. And next thing you know, nobody is willing to rent from you. Now, moving along, number three on the list, and those are rodents Ooh, oh my god <sighs> disgusting anyways i'm sure rodents don't need any type of introduction whatsoever and very similarly to roaches they carry disease they can create not only health problems but also create some type of you know mental stress on you because nobody at the end of the day wants to live in a place when there are roaches i mean we even gotten movies where rodents became the star because the theme of the movies were big cities being flooded by rodents all over the place so watch out now next one on the list and this one it's a little bit more difficult to find because they manage to hide themselves pretty well and that is the famous bed bugs now you might be wondering bed bugs it's kind of funny it's such a funny name right why would they want to be named after beds right well it's very simple they are named bed bugs because of us and because of the beds see what happens is that everyone, every human being out there, anytime you breathe in, what you push out of your body, it's carbon dioxide. And that becomes a trigger, just like this, for bed bugs. They have this natural instinct to easily pick up on anything that it's, you know, pushing carbon dioxide out because that makes them believe that you are going to be their next host. And where is the place where we hang out? normally most of our time it's in our bed once you lay there you fall asleep you pass out and you don't wake up until the next day five six seven or sometimes even eight hours if you're lucky enough to get eight hours of sleep and next thing you know your body has been covered all over with red dots linear red dots of bed bugs and the funny part is that you have made everything really accessible for them because now you are the providers of their food and they have also find a nice home in your mattress, in your bed. Why? Because bed bugs love to hide in between hidden spaces in your mattress. Anything that is dark, anything that they cannot see, that's exactly where they're going to go, lay their eggs, and next thing you know, in a matter of weeks, you wind up with a bed bug infestation quite disgusting. Now, there are a few things that you can do to prevent things from either happening or from getting worse. The number one solution that you can actually take into consideration is to buy a mattress cover. You can find those easily in Amazon and you can put a mattress cover on top of your mattress and prevent them from going in to the hidden spaces in your mattress. Now, you might be wondering, yeah, but I still don't see what does that have to do with real estate? I mean, I could use that in my home for sure, but what does it have to do with real estate? Well, maybe not you if you are a long-term real estate investor and you only provide rentals but what about those who provide short-term rentals anyone who is an airbnb for the most part you will rent out your space all nicely rented out with nice furniture and there's going to be plenty of beds available in your property not just that you're opening your doors to strangers basically people who are coming to your home from all over the world and they might bring bed bugs with them if you are a traveler by nature you could be exposing yourself to bed bugs as well see bed bugs are not an issue of whether you're a clean person or not anyone even the cleanest person in the world could get a bed bug infestation because what they do they're drawn to you based on whatever you push out of your body and everyone that breathes and that in and itself it's enough to attract them but there are also preventative measures that you can take in order to protect yourself and that's by using repellent and when i talk about repellents i'm not talking about buying tons and tons of bottles of off and just spraying it all over your body uh, because that eventually becomes toxic for you. What you can do is to leverage natural oils like for example citronella oils or lavender oils and you can grab a little bit of those and put those in your wrist 
in your ankles and a little bit behind your ears, and that will act as a natural repellent. It is not bulletproof. However, if you were placing people right next to you and you are the one with the repellent, chances are they're going to want to jump into other people's body and not necessarily yours. And Anthony and I, we love to travel. So every time we travel, what we like to do is to spread a lot of that oil. We rub it in our hands and we just put it all over our suitcases because chances are in the airport and in the plane, which by the way, those are the places where you will find the most bed bugs. They could eventually jump into our suitcases. But if you use those natural repellents, you might make them just simply pick another suitcase and not yours. And to add the cherry on top, those are also great repellents for mosquitoes, for those who live in warmer climates. So that way you don't have to expose your health and impact them negatively due to the chemicals of those repellents. And you will also be protecting the environment because those are natural repellents. And now we've reached the very end of our list. But before we continue, if you're enjoying this episode, do not forget to hit the like button right here to help this episode rank and make this content available for other people like you who are looking to get information about this topic. And if you already hit like, feel free to share this episode with someone you think is going to benefit from this because at the end of the day, sharing is caring. Now back to the board, the fifth pass and the most dangerous one by far and the most difficult one to find by far. And that is termites. So for those who have never heard of termites, think of it this way. Termites, as you can see here, they are kind of like ants. At least that's how they're called in Chinese. My mom calls them uh, the wood ants. And they are ant looking insects that love to get into the woods and start carving holes, eating the woods until they form their entire colony and they can all live happily ever after inside the wood. Now, you might be wondering, that's great, but what does it have to do with real estate? I mean, so what if they eat a couple of cabinets? Well, they don't just eat cabinets, but they can also eat the entire structure of your home. For those who are already done construction, you will know that for the most part in the US, you will use wood beans to build the foundation of your properties or the houses or the buildings. So if you come to think of it, imagine if you get an entire colony of termites eating into the foundation of the house. I mean, it's only going to be a matter of time before the building or the house collapses. But don't worry, it's not like it's going to collapse overnight. That process takes time. But hey, who knows? You might have inherited a house with termites and you might not be even be aware about it. So the process could have been 10 years in, 20 years in, 50 years in and you might not be completely aware of what's going on and next thing you know all of a sudden you have a tenant you've rented the property nicely and one night the entire property just collapses out of the blue right and believe me at that point the collapse of that house will be the least of your concerns yes it might be expensive but think about the family who suffer damages or worse maybe somebody die inside of that property now, not only you're responsible for the lives of other people, now you are getting sued by the family members, probably even get sued by the city or get sued by the neighbors because maybe you're causing disturbances and they're concerned and worse, your insurance might not want to cover you on that. So what do you go from there? And by now you might be thinking, gee, man, okay, I get the picture now. It's quite expensive. It's quite challenging. It's quite difficult. What can I do to prevent something like this from happening? Or if I'm now in the middle of this situation, what can I do to fix the situation? And for that, what we're going to do, we're going to go straight into my computer to learn about ways that you can follow or best practices that you can take into consideration to help you preventing this problem from growing any bigger. And here we are in my computer and uh, we are looking at this amazing website that is pretty informative. Uh, you can just get to it by typing pestworld.org forward slash pest dash guy forward slash. And as you scroll down the website, you will find this guy, uh, this very comprehensive list of rodent insects and bugs. Uh, so you can identify what type of problem that you're facing with. And then as you hover over the images, you will see that, hey, we got fleas here. We got roaches, ants, lice, spiders, termites and yada yada. So let's say you want to learn more about termites. So all you got to do is just to click in here. Let me just quickly 
And as you scroll down, you will learn uh, basically all there is for you to learn about termites. So there are videos about termites, so you can learn how to identify them, how to control and exterminate them, and uh, the different type of uh, termites that you may possibly encounter. So you got the subterranean, you got the dry wood, a uh, damp wood, formosan, conehead, termite, and yada yada. And as you scroll down, there's more and more related content that you can actually get through. So that way you stay informed and help you decide the proper course of action. So let's say, for example, you're right here on this website and you notice, okay, I believe I have a termite problem. Uh, everything I see is consistent to what I'm reading here or to uh, what I'm watching here on the videos on the side. Now I think it's time for me to uh, hire a professional to help me eradicate the problem. Once again, this is not a do-it-yourself type of thing because if you do it yourself, chances are you might wind up leaving loose ends. And next thing you know, you have the problem all over again after all of your hard work. So just go to the professionals, have them help you out to do things the right way. So that way you don't have to worry about termites or any other type of pests coming back to your property. Now, in the event that you want to do a search, the best way you can go about it is by simply using a Google search. I know that you see that there's a search box right here. I was actually playing around with this toolbar and uh, the options that they show are actually very limited. So you are better off just simply going to Google and find whatever is by your vicinity. So um, you have your Google search right here and then just simply type pest control services. And as you can see, just use near me. Google is actually pretty good at identifying your location. So uh, there's nothing for you to worry about there. All you got to do is just to type in pest control services and it will do a quick search for anything nearby your area. And as you can see here, there's the listing. All you got to do is just simply expand and then you will start seeing all the available services within your neighborhood. So in my case, I live in New York City and uh, here are all the multiple providers and um, you know specialists that uh, work on pest control. So all you gotta do is just to simply come in here and pick on the ones that, hey, you can go by review. So you got this one, 235 reviews at a five star. Hey, why not? Let's just check this one out. You also have um, this one here, Pathway Pest Control with 11 reviews at five stars. Why not? And then 35, 4.8, uh, good enough. 4.9, Woodside, nine. Okay, good enough. Once you come in here, you will find uh, the list of services that they cover, whether it's bed bugs, bees, uh, termite control. So we're talking about termites. Uh, usually some of these sites, not all of them, but for the most part, they tend to have an informational site, so to speak, uh, where you can actually learn a little bit about them and what you can do. And some of these videos to help you uh, better understand what the services it's going to cover, what would you be getting in the event that you want to hire them? And yeah, so a lot to learn. This other website, uh, pest control about us, pest library. Let's see. They, Hey, there you go. You got some more right here on flies, bed bugs, uh, rodent termites. So let's say you want to uh, check out their termite services. Uh, here is the form that you can fill up to request um, their services. And there you go. More information right here. Same thing with this one. Exterminators in Queens, home on roaches, rats, termite, bed bugs. So let's just open up the uh, termite section. And as you zoom in, scroll down, they are, um, you know, this one is a, a bit brief with their information, but hey, it, it it's something, right? And then you also got Woodside Exterminator over here. All you gotta do is just do um, zoom in. So let's check out the termites. Okay, so their site doesn't open up, but hey, they offer a 10% discount for all internet customers. And as you scroll down, you can learn a little bit more about what they do and uh, just reach out to them. And that's pretty much all I have for you today. I truly hope that you enjoyed this episode and you actually learned something with it. And while I still have you here, don't forget to check this episode right here that's going to help you complement everything you learned today. And until then, we'll see each other next time. Take care. Bye-bye.